On the agenda tonight, we have a very special guest joining me on the channel. It's Steve Stevens from Billy Idol. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to this very special video. If you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Steve up on screen. Hello, Steve. Can you hear me? I can hear you and see you. Can, uh, can you hear and see me? Yes, I can hear and see you as well. How are you oh, doing? Oh, great, great. Yeah. <laughs> You've been having some crazy temperatures uh, over where you are. Yeah. Well, the whole... Um, my wife and I moved to uh, Las Vegas about a year ago, mm. and uh, but this heat wave has hit like three days ago. The whole entire West Coast, California, and uh, all of Nevada. So we we hit about 110 degrees, <laughs> and of course my air conditioning goes out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect timing. So, how are you? I mean, in yourself and. You know, yourself and Billy, I know that you've been very busy and that you're scheduled to start up touring again, kind of August time, mid-August. Um, yeah, we go we go into rehearsals in August mm. and then I think our first, we'd have a, because we haven't played for a while, so uh, we have initial small, uh, small theater run in the States and then we go down to South America with supporting Green Day on some shows. Uh, then we have some shows of our own, and then we we come to Europe, and uh, and I know that we're doing uh, um, uh, Wembley Arena, mm -hmm. so um, you're invited. I'll send you in info. I, uh, you're, you're I'm there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm kind of yeah, just outside London, so that's all kind of pretty local to me. So yeah, great. That'd great. be great. Yeah, be, yeah. Fine, be good. Good to meet up. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Looking forward to that later on in the year, and I mean getting really up to date with the whole Top Gun movie that's just been released and you know talking to the guy that played on that original theme I think we'll just kind of talk about that uh, to begin with because sure. it's such an iconic theme uh, that everybody knows and yeah. I'd like you to tell uh, my subscribers here on the channel uh, the story which I know but about you going to the premiere of the movie having done the recording yeah well um you know it, it was kind of like um you know as I tell people uh, a lot of times with you know musical careers and stuff you'd just never know what things are going to really take off for. Sometimes you'll do something and you've spent days or hours on something and, and it merely makes a, a little blip in the, in the whole thing. But with Top Gun, um, we, were, um, we were recording Billy's third album, uh, Whiplash Smile, and uh, the keyboard player was Howard Faltemeyer, who was friends with our producer, Keith Forsey. They both worked with Giorgio Moroda. So Harold is working on the record and as, as just in passing said, oh, you know, hey, Steve, I'm working on this theme, you know, this, this uh, soundtrack for this movie, uh, Top Gun. And uh, it stars Tom Cruise, who I only briefly kind of knew, uh, I, I think by then he'd done Risky Business, I knew that. Mm -hmm. um, and he showed me some footage, and at that at that time, you know, that was state of the art. Although, you know, they're they're like little planes on sticks. You know, <laughs> it's not it's not like what it is now. But um, uh, so, I, you know, I said, yeah, sure, I'd love to. So we arranged on the weekend um, after we had finished up Billy Idol session. My gear was already set up, which was, you know, blessing, and um, put on the multi track. This is the days of you know, twenty four track multi track. Put it on. And um, <clears throat> Harold played the theme to me. That was the f first time I'd heard it. And uh, he said, well, this is the theme. This is, we, we, we need the guitar to play this theme. And then there's a solo section. And, um, and I think the whole session, you know, it was, it was probably about three hours, the whole thing. Uh, the solo, I remember, by and large, was one take. We might have punched in a couple of little things uh, that I felt were not quite... Um, I think the most important thing was because because I was accompanying strings, uh, my tuning had to be spot on. So um, you know that was something that we were really cognizant of. You know, making sure uh, this that you know. And I <clears throat> I remember at the beginning there's virtually no vibrato in the theme. The first time it plays, very straight ahead. And then as it goes along, I'm using more whammy and. <laughs> And that was at the instruction of Harold. He's don't go too crazy at the beginning. Just play the notes, 
and so they hang with the strings. He said, and after people know the get to use it, you know, get used to it afterwards. Um, and that's uh, you know, whenever um, people ask me, they'll they'll post their version of playing it. And um, my one comment is, make sure you know at the front end, just play it really simply, just state the theme. So then, yeah, forgot about it after what thing the end of a session. Um, and Harold said, oh, the premiere. It's living in New York. Oh, premiere. I've never been to a movie premiere. Harold is, is a very up and, you know, optimistic guy. He's like, this is going to be great, you know. Opens and it's, you know, the drone and the, the, the gong sample sound. We're like, and I know exactly where my guitar is going to come in, you know. Counting down the bars, 24, 23, 23 just where my guitar was going to come in. It, it cuts to Kenny Love, Danger Zone. Uh, I look at Harold go, what the? <laughs> Fortunately, it, later on, you know, and one of the most high points in the film, in the original film, is, you know, when he lands back on the uh, aircraft carrier and then my theme plays. And, uh, I felt, well, that's kind of cool that they didn't, that the only, the first time you hear me is this big triumphant moment. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, and then we ended up winning a Grammy. Um, and I, I, as I said, I was living in New York. I wouldn't, the Grammys were in Los Angeles and I didn't really you know, think much of it. I didn't, I, I, I wouldn't have flown specifically out for it. Um, uh, as hard to believe as that is, because that, category it was not I knew it wasn't televised it was in the afternoon um, and uh, but as luck would have it I was performing with Billy Idol on the Grammys I was already there yeah. so um, you know I went uh, to with Harold and we, we won and I was kind of like what we won and I came back to the hotel you know uh, to get ready for the performance with Idol like, hey Billy I won a Grammy <laughs> what <laughs> It's uh, great. Especially considering that the amount of time that is only taken a few hours, and that is something that stands out to me on that. I mean, just with the playing in general, that it does have a spontaneity to it, that it doesn't sound too planned. Right. And I think that's something that's going to lend itself to connect to more people because it's not contrived. It's not like, right, here we go, you know, 78th take, now we'll try and get it right kind of thing. It was, right. this is what it is, and very much reacting to just, like you said, the strings in the background, just working right. off the back of that. And another thing that I was thinking, yeah, obviously if you're watching the movie, knowing the bar that your solo comes in, and then it cutting, <laughs> I'm sure that, yeah, the musician and me, you think, what? <laughs> but then kind of taking a step back, and looking at the overall kind of edit of the movie, it does stand to reason that, you know, like you said, when you're playing the, the theme and you see people do their covers, the advice is always, you know, effectively don't show your ace at the beginning, because right. right. then you've got nowhere to go. And right. I think very much with that edit of the movie, if that came in in the intro, You've right. shown the theme, you know, you, you've shown the ace at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> right, so yeah. it kind of, I'm sure that that's even though, yeah, musicians <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would definitely be able to relate to that story. But yeah. yeah, in the long run, it's, you know, hitting at that kind of crescendo of the movie as well. So, well, yeah, yeah, and you don't actually even hear the theme uh, at all at the front. You just get this suspense. Uh, brilliant, brilliant on the part of the music supervisor, actually, um, because you just get this low drone in those 808 uh, drum hi hats building, and it's um, and it's uh, great. I mean, uh, you know, me not being a music supervisor, I would have thrown in the theme and the yeah, let's give it to him. But actually, really very smart. When you're thinking about a guitar solo. It yeah. is a long one. So when you're thinking yeah, about yeah, keeping the interest for that amount of time, yeah. again, it's something that's going to be very difficult, maybe more difficult if you're trying to write out a solo and then you think, right. what am I going to do here? Because I've already done that. And then what shall I slot in here? Whereas just going, I mean, there's kind of tapping in there as well. I think kind of on the open G string. So right. you've got kind of lots of different techniques in there that are, you know, yeah, more whammy bar as you go. And actually quite a heavy vibrato, the further we get into it, which 
right. makes such a difference to the expression. I think I think that one of the saving graces was that I didn't have to spend any time getting a good guitar sound because my gear was already set up, had been set up for a month. Uh, so I could virtually plug in. I wasn't burnt out on you know, getting the mics and all. And especially back then in, in the 80s, it was a lot you know, more difficult uh, as a guitar player. I don't think us guitar players knew as much about engineering and could speak that language to the engineer. Oh, try a 57 here. And we didn't know any of that stuff back then. But the fact is, it, my, my gear was ready to go. My guitar was ready to go. All I had to do was play, which is really uh, the best case scenario for any guitar player. I think that's why we all love our home recording gear. It's ready to go. Uh, all we have to do is come up with the idea. So um, I think that uh, I was surprised that there was a solo in it that long. I expected it to be edited down, as, as, as many things were back then. Um, so I was like, really, this, I solo there for that long? And Harold's like, yeah, man, go for it, you know? And I was like, okay, you know? And, um, it is, you know, it was really just feeling the track and, um, you know, that rhythm guitar thing under it, I didn't play that. That was, that's actually guitar sample, I believe. Uh, Harold is very good at da, 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 all that stuff. That's, that's actually sampled keyboards. Um, so I was kind of feeding off that. I was like, that's cool, you know, the, the way the whole track, the whole picture changes there, gets a bit funky. Um, and I was really, um, I think as other guitar players who play against the backing track, it's a cool, cool backing track mm -hmm. to play over. So all I had to do was get out of my own way and just uh, allow the music to guide me. So I'm just going to jump in here because Steve and I spoke for about an hour and a half and during that time we spoke about the Top Gun theme, his approach to playing and his advice to other players of how to advance and just push your playing to the next level. We got the guitars out as well so most likely I'm going to be cutting that footage up into three parts. I am going to be editing that hour and a half down to make it as concise as possible, but make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss part two and part three. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and it's a great time to subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock.